All right, so today I have a Southern Marine Research Sea Lab 9000 little handheld marine radio the customer brought in to me because he ordered a replacement cord for it. I think it's this one right here, the DC cord, because this one actually says Sea Lab 9000. So I believe that is the correct charger for this radio, but he ordered a replacement battery cable to plug it into a cigarette lighter. And after that, the radio stopped working completely. So I suspect the polarity on this cigarette lighter plug is reversed and it may have done some damage inside the radio. So let's go ahead and first test the AC adapter polarity and the DC 12 volt cigarette lighter adapter polarity and see if they agree with each other. So they certainly don't make them like this anymore. Look at that, a complete schematic diagram for the radio, as well as a complete circuit board diagram that shows where all the parts are basically. They didn't label a lot of the parts, but you can get the gist of it if you have to do a repair on this unit. So just in case you have one of these and you need some service on it, I'm gonna go ahead and show every page of the alignment procedure. So there are the steps on how to align your radio if necessary. Seven steps all the way down to the RF power output adjustment. And there is a complete block diagram of the unit if necessary. And several pages of replacement parts. as well as a page of mechanical parts. Okay, so first I'll go ahead and check the AC adapter and it shows a tip negative on this one. So I'll go ahead and I'll put my positive lead on the outside, the negative lead on the inside, and I'll power this unit on. And we see 13.88 volts of DC. And we see five volts of AC ripple on this. So that tells me this does not have a filter cap in the unit, or if it does, it is certainly defective. So right now I've got 13 volts of DC coming out of this unit. The tip is the negative. Next, we'll go ahead and check the cigarette lighter adapter and see what we get on that. So I've got my lead on the center of the coaxial connector and I have my ohmmeter in the ohm range. So I should get zero ohms and I do not. What do we get here? I get one ohm. So the center is positive on this one. That is wrong. And the sleeve or the ground connector is actually negative. So this thing is connected backwards and that would do damage to the radio. So there is actually a battery inside. Let's go ahead and check and see if there's any voltage on the battery. I have my voltmeter in the DC volt position. And we'll go ahead and read from the positive to the negative, and I see 1.171 volts. Well, that thing is certainly dead because it does specify a 9.6 volt battery, and it looks like it was replaced April 7th of 2011. So that thing is over 10 years old right now. I'm just gonna go ahead and unplug the battery, get it out of the way. We'll pop all the screws out of this thing and get it open. Okay, so I've got the radio open and take a look at this. There's a big crack through this capacitor right here. So what this is, it's a 0.001 microfarad capacitor with this pin being the common and then a 0 0.001, 0 0.001 and throughout all the way down to here. Those are the input pins of the microprocessor for the channel selection, but there's a big crack in the middle of it. But I don't think that's the problem. Let's go ahead and flip the board over and take a look at the other side. So there is the other side of the unit. Some of you eagle-eyed troubleshooters may have already spotted the problem. Let me zoom in on it and show you what I found. So right here is the DC input jack, the center terminal, which would be the negative, and then the outer terminals over here, which would be the positive. But take a look at that. That is a transistor blown open and that is a transistor blown open as well. There's a high probability these diodes right down in here, there's a couple of Zener diodes, may have been damaged also. I'll go ahead and try to test those just with an ohmmeter and see if they have forward bias. If they do, they're probably okay, but definitely the problem is this transistor and this transistor, then there's another Zener diode right there. So I thought it was kind of strange when I pulled this thing apart. I found this part right there that said 58 on it and I didn't know where it actually went. I hadn't done a thorough visual inspection yet, but as you can see, it goes to this transistor 2SC2458. The other one is the same exact number, 2SC2458. So those are definitely bad. I'm gonna to have to find some replacements for those. But once again, it may have some other bad associated components. If those things have been damaged, no telling what else is going on in this thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and check those Zener diodes real quick, just with an ohmmeter and see if I get any kind of reading whatsoever. 
So I went ahead and marked the three diodes with these red dots. So there's one diode here to here, one from here to here, and one from here to here. So let's go ahead and check those. I have my ohmmeter in the diode range right now, and I just want to see continuity one way. And I see a diode junction right there and open that way. And I see a diode junction that way. And I see open in that direction. And I see open in that direction. And I do see a diode junction in that direction. So that tells me that the diodes are good. They're not shorted. So I just need to find some replacement transistors and go ahead and put them in there and see if we get a different result. Well, unfortunately, I don't have any 2SC 2458s, but I do have a bunch of 2SC 945s. As far as I can tell, they're pretty similar. The 2458 says it has a collector power dissipation of 200 milliwatts. The 945 is 250. And so we're only dealing with 15 volts, so voltage really doesn't matter. DC current gain is between 70 and 700 on the 2458. And on the 945, it's between 90 and 600. That's pretty doggone close in my book. So the pinouts are exactly the same. Emitter, collector, base, emitter, collector, base. So let's go ahead and throw two of those in there and see what happens. Okay, so I went ahead and charged the battery a little bit on my bench power supply. So I'm going to disconnect the AC plug. So let's go ahead and give it a test. I have it set to channel 16 marine band radio right now. I'm just going to hit the transmit button here. Check, check, check. One, two, three. And so you can hear it coming through my Yesu handheld right there. And then I'll move the microphone over to the radio here, the C lab, and I'll transmit on this. Okay, so I am transmitting into this unit from my Yesu handheld right now, and the audio is working perfectly. It's running on batteries right now. There is nothing connected to it. I'd say we have a successful repair. So next, all I need to do is go ahead and rewire the cigarette lighter plug so the polarity is correct, so this does not happen again. Okay, so all I need to do is reverse the leads on this connector. As you can see, the black lead with the white stripe is going to the tip, the positive. And then the solid black is tied in a knot and go into the negative. So I'm just going to go ahead and unsolder those and reverse the polarity and we should be good. Okay, so the leads have been reversed. The black with the white stripe is now negative and the solid black is now positive. Let's put it back together and give it a final test. Okay, well there it is, back together, the C-Lab 9000. I do have this connected to the cigarette lighter adapter, supplying 12 volts into the radio, and it's working absolutely perfectly. I certainly hope you enjoyed this video on the repair of the C-Lab 9000. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at NorCal715. You can email me, NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Please be patient. I do have a full-time job, and I do this in my spare time. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Bye-bye.